All right, hold on. I seen this on TikTok, literally just on my phone on TikTok right now, and I got kind of excited because I was like, wait, hold on. Because I ain't seen her in a minute. And then she popped back on the scene talking about talking about God. Now I'm trying to figure out, you talking about Jesus? Who we talking about? Who, who, who are we talking about? But it sounds good. This might be a testimony. Hold on. Let me let me play this brief snippet. Cause y'all probably don't know who I'm talking about. Let me play this. Let me let me play this this brief uh snippet. And then we might watch the full video. Let me see. Hold on. Money is a powerful drug, even to people who don't worship it. The money and the opportunities were not stopping, so I was not going to stop. But God stopped me because I asked him to. Listen to how good my God is. So there was this time when I first started. I was in my two-bedroom apartment in West Hollywood. This was before the book deals, the TV deals, the music deals, like before all of that. But there was a trajectory of where I was going, and it was up. And it was so exciting and also so terrifying. So I prayed and I said, God, I see what you have in store for me and I'm so grateful. Thank you for this continued success. My prayer above all prayers is that you never let me stray too far. Don't let me get lost in the scene. Don't let me disappear in Hollywood. Lord, above all, protect my soul. If I ever put myself in danger, pull me back. I don't care how bad it hurts. I don't care how much I kick and scream and cry and beg and pray for it to stop. Protect my soul, keep me close to you. And that's what he did. So he took it all away from me and he took me away from it. And you put me exactly where I needed to be so that he could reach me, which was that house. <laughs> he answered my prayer. He is so faithful, even when we are not. Money is a Bro, y'all remember Gabby uh, Hanna? She was like big on, I think, what was it, Vine? She was big on Vine. And then she got just mainstream popping. And then she was really popping on YouTube as well. She got 5 million subscribers on YouTube right now. Um, she ain't posted in a minute. She kind of went like, kind of went ghost. I think there was a video of her like working as, as like a personal trainer or something like that, which is dope. Like I have like that's really cool. That's really cool. Like sometimes we get so wrapped up in this social media stuff that we like forget how much of a privilege and how much of a blessing it is to be able to do this as a job. So like, bro, going back and doing something like a, a like a traditional nine to five, like a personal trainer or something like that, I could see from the standpoint of like a social media, like a person who makes content on social media, I could see how that could kind of be therapeutic in a way because this lifestyle is very strange. It's a very strange lifestyle. Like it's an awesome lifestyle, it's an amazing lifestyle, but at the same time, it's a very strange lifestyle that we get paid to do what we do. And I'm only experiencing just a small taste of it. Whereas Gabby has experienced I can't even imagine how many more magnitudes of success and what that could do to you. So I'm very curious to see what this is. I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is a testimony. I don't know what this is. We're going to try to figure it out. All right, let's watch. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. That I wanted to buy property in Pennsylvania in my hometown like that. That was always end game. But I never thought that I would sell that house. So. Here's how we got here. Towards the end of 2022, the same theme kept coming up in my journaling. Get home. I had all these fears and anxieties about something happening to a family member, especially one of my siblings. Like all I kept thinking is, wow, I've been out here for nine years. And in that time, I'd been back home probably less than 10 times. And then even those trips were so rushed because it was around the holidays. So I kind of like had to be there and it was really just kind of chaotic and fast. So I haven't actually spent quality time at home since since I graduated college, really. And not actually, no, before then, because I lived at my aunt's and then I moved to Ohio and then I moved to LA. So I'd have been home, home in like a minute. So if anything would have happened to any of us, then it would have been a relationship that should have been and never was. And I also was getting a lot of weird anxiety, like outside of like my own sort of like safety and security breaches, right? Like I was really not feeling comfortable in LA anymore. I felt like the energy and the culture was just shifting so much. There was all this talk about the power grid blowing out and, you know, the economy started getting really crazy and was afraid of nuclear warfare and somebody told me that the first place to get nuked in the mainland of the United States would be California. So I just, <laughs> I was really just not feeling comfy there and I was afraid that something would happen and then I wouldn't be able to get home. Okay, you get it, okay? I get scared. <laughs> So I made my mind up in December of 2022. I was absolutely buying a house in Pennsylvania. So that was decided. But the thing that was looming over me and that was still so uncertain was what I was going to do with my house in LA. Was I going to sell it? Was I going to rent it? Airbnb it? Was I going to just keep it empty so that I could go be there whenever? Or some mix of those things. I am a highly indecisive person and I hate change. And I'm really bad at letting things go. And this was like 
a major life altering decision. Kinda. At least it like, it felt like it at the time, but spoiler alert, it actually wasn't. It was, it's not that big of a deal actually. Not, it does not matter. <laughs> so new year, top of 2023, I'm determined to get out of this house. I've decided I gotta go. But first, <laughs> I had to get to a place where I could even show it. At this point, two of the five bedrooms were basically storage units. There were so many half-finished projects, half-painted walls, like construction everywhere. <laughs> A ton of repairs that still needed to be done. There was stuff going on in the yard and landscaping that was in the works. So I couldn't show the house like this, but I get to it. For the next like four months, I'm doing nothing but this. Like every single day, waking up, doing housework, doing projects, painting, putting things away, organizing, downsizing. And as tedious as it was, it actually turned into the biggest blessing of my life. This was the first time in a while that I had a clear and legitimate timeline. Wait. I just thought of something. I just thought of something. Was she there? Hold on. I don't want to say it because I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be wrong. Oh, it was. Do y'all remember? she kind of lost her mind for a little bit for real i don't know if y'all remember those tiktok videos but she kind of lost her mind a little bit she fell into like a manic state at one point in time and she was posting all these very weird demonic strange videos um on tiktok and i don't know if those are still up right now Hold on. It was these videos right here. I can't play the audio though. I don't know if you remember these. You could kind of see what she's saying just based on like lip reading. But Oh, snap. Yeah, I remember so this happened like a couple years ago, I think. I remember I was gonna make a video on this, but I didn't make a video on it because it was so disturbing. I didn't even know how to talk about it. So I just left it alone. But there were so many people in the comment section, and this is not the only video. There was like a lot of videos, just very strange, bizarre. It looked like she was really crying out for help. I don't know if it was like drugs, if it was alcohol, if it was anxiety, if it was depression, if, if it was a mixture of all of those, spiritual warfare. I don't know what it was, but it really seemed like she was really about to like crash and burn very tragically. Um, so this is actually like a full circle transformation is what it seems like. Okay, now I'm even more interested in, in hearing this story. a deadline and a goal. This was a project that involved so many other people than me. Like at this point, I had spent the last couple of years in what could honestly be classified as um, like almost, to almost total isolation for the majority of it. And I think that I was like getting a little too comfortable there. <laughs> and what was worse was I was getting a little too uncomfortable out there. And honestly, looking back now, like now that I'm totally removed, I really didn't understand just how bad it had gotten, but God knew and God had a plan. So according to God's plan, everything and i mean everything that could have gone wrong did everything that should have been tragically easy was tragically difficult i couldn't write this if i tried welcome to the gabby show levels of wrong it made no sense like all i'm trying to do is get out of this house and it's getting prolonged longer and longer prolonged oh my gosh words are crazy <laughs> it's wasting so much of my time what time what would I be doing instead? If all these men weren't in my house right now doing the same job that they did wrong last time, what would I be doing? And man, it sure was nice to have somebody to talk to. It was nice to have a reason to get out of bed in the morning, to get dressed and keep my house clean and tidy and do something, anything, literally anything. Because yeah, she was struggling. Now that I, just listening to what she's saying, because it was very clear, it was very apparent, and I don't even want to play like y'all could go go on TikTok, just search like Gabby Hanna breakdown, whatever you want to do. I'm not gonna show it in this video because like it, it it was pretty rough and difficult to watch. 
Um, but just hearing her talk right now, you could tell that she was she was clearly struggling in, in a state of, um, you know, depression and anxiety and just um, loneliness, darkness. And that's the state that I've been in as well. That's that's the place where I've been in. I'm, I'm very familiar with that place as well. Um, and I can truly tell you that Jesus Christ is the only one that can lift you out of that state for real. And this is me speaking from a personal experience of, of feeling like I didn't want to live or I, I didn't have anything to live for. And Jesus literally pulling me out of the pit. Like, so I, I it, it, it resonates with me when I see a transformation like this, it resonates with me, but let's continue watching to, to, to figure out how the story ends. I just lay around and hide for eight hours while these guys come out uh, to install a doorbell for the third time. <laughs> it was just really nice to have some company. Like, do you see how good God is? That when everything seems like it's going wrong, but it's actually a blessing. If you care to see, if you pay attention when things go wrong and you go, what is God trying to show me, teach me, or bless me with? Nothing's really ever going wrong wrong he saw what i needed which was company and motivation and he provided it so i'm spending all this time and energy and money and focus on getting this house ready to show and sell by the time i was done didn't i just fall right back in love with it isn't that funny i spent all this time falling apart inside of a house that was falling apart and then i put it back together again and then i put me back Aww. together again so i accomplished my goals i bought the house back at home i finished my house in la maybe i could keep both I love them both. And that was the tussle. And by the way, if you're sitting at home watching this and thinking, how privileged and out of touch is this girl to be sitting here complaining about whether or not she should keep two houses or just one. And I want you to know, I know. That's why I sold the house. See, at this point, at this phase, after the house was finished, it was summer. It was beautiful. I'm walking to the gym every day in the beautiful sunshine. I'm laying out in my pool. All of my flowers are blooming. My vines that I planted are finally growing and mingling. The hummingbirds are in the air. The bees are buzzing. Hi, little bees. Oh, hi, little bees. The lavender and the jasmine. I was determined to keep it. Determined. I put too much work and time and love into it. I loved it so much. Listen to me. Literally. The day before I hit up my realtor to put my house on the market, I had made a whole plan for an Airbnb. It was going to be the sickest Airbnb in the world. It was going to be like an artist haven where you could use my whole paint studio, all the paints and clay and supplies and an easel and canvas would be in there for your use. Each room had this really cool special theme. I had speakers in the ceilings in almost every room so you could play music through the whole house and the yard. The speakers were in the yard. And financially, like it actually made a lot more sense to keep the house. That's what it always was in the first place. It was an investment like that's how i justified making the purchase is it was a place that i was able to operate my business either i was gonna live in it forever or i was gonna rent it or i was gonna airbnb it it was always an investment but along the way it became a home it was literally a dream come true like my entire life i was just so afraid of being homeless so when i became an adult it was like this laser focused thing like i have to get a home i wrote down everything i wanted that house to be in my journal i even drew pictures of what it would become and i found it so the first night i was actually in the house i got down on all fours like head to the ground just like bowed down and i just prayed and i was like god i don't know how you did it i don't know why you did it i don't know why you you believe that i deserve this but thank you lord so much for this home please fill it with love and let it be a resting place for anybody who needs it and it just blows me away when i look back and i realize that he did just that in that house with nobody there except for me and him that's where god taught me love he mm. filled that house with himself which means he filled it with love because god is love that's where he provided a resting place for somebody who needed it which was me <laughs> it's just so beautiful he stripped away every distraction and left me with nothing but the roof over my head which was leaking my two cats and him just the four of us <laughs> me god freddie and radio <laughs> Like I was ripped apart somewhat violently <laughs> from everything I knew and just forced to rest, reset, ask myself some really hard questions, ask God some really hard questions. And what a better place to do it than this little tiny piece of Eden, my little piece of heaven on earth. God provided this perfect resting place where he could heal me. In all of this mental decay, I couldn't help but just praise God that I ended up here. I was able to be outside a lot in the sunshine, which is really good for me. Now I live in literally, did you know Western PA in Eastern Ohio? are literally the most overcast places in America. 
Anyways, I love the song. And I was able to practice my singing voice for the first time without needing to keep it quiet or feeling like I'm gonna get a noise complaint or just being embarrassed in general that I'm practicing notes that I cannot hit and the neighbors on the other side of my paper thin walls in the apartment could hear me. I had the space to dance without banging my arms and my fingers against doorways and in bathroom counters <laughs> or getting noise complaints from the people below me. I could work on paintings for the first time without worrying about spilling paint on somebody else's carpet or leave out projects for days and days even weeks at a time and it's fine because i actually had the room to do it and i was able to cry a lot <laughs> loudly uninterrupted those are all things i would have never stopped to do had god not stopped me i was on this speeding train headed for a cliff and i could not get off but money is a powerful drug even to people who don't worship it the money and the opportunities were not stopping so i was not going to stop but god stopped me because i asked him to listen to how good my god is so there was this time when i first started i was in my two-bedroom apartment in west hollywood this was before the book deals the tv deals the music deals like before all of that but there was a trajectory of where I was going and it was up and it was so exciting and also so terrifying. So mm. I prayed and I said, God, I see what you have in store for me and I'm so grateful. Thank you for this continued success. My prayer above all prayers is that you never let me stray too far. Don't let me get lost in the scene. Don't let me disappear in Hollywood. Lord, above all, protect my soul. If I mm. ever put myself in danger, pull me back. I don't care how bad it hurts. I don't care how much I kick and scream and cry and beg and pray for it to stop. Protect my soul, keep me close to you. And that's what he did. So he took it all away from me and he took me away from it. And he put me exactly where I needed to be so that he could reach me, which was wow. that house. <laughs> he answered my prayer. He is so faithful, even when we are not. So the reason I felt so attached to that house, besides the fact that it was awesome, <laughs> it was so cool. But it was the place I fell in love. It's the place I fell in love with myself, back in love with God, in wow. love with nature and my cats and my free time. I fell in love with my life. I gained my courage and my confidence. I learned how to sing and dance and paint and relax. And I learned what really mattered. I learned how to care for myself. I felt like I could breathe. Like for the first time I knew what breath was. It was like my own personal rehab. So I think I was mostly afraid to let go of that house because I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to find that again somewhere else. But there's this thing they say, right? Like the home is where the heart is. And I realized that my home is wherever God wants me to be because wow. he is with me wherever I go. And he made Amen. it very clear to me that he did not want me in that house anymore, in that city anymore. And the choice is mine. I have my free choice, but he gives great advice. So I like to listen when I can, <laughs> but I really, really wanted to keep both. I wanted to know that I could always come back if I wanted to. And I think that's another reason that God really wanted me to let it go, to leave it behind me like actually leave it behind me so i let it go and now i'm free mm. that's a real testimony man i know some people are gonna be like oh she over here talking about you know woe is me i got too much money i got too much homes i don't know what to do but you got to understand our god is a personal relational god this is her life this is a life that she this this was her life she she's successful. She got money. She like this is her life. But even in that success, even in that money, she still was lost. She still fell out of love with herself. And most importantly, as she said, she fell out of love with God. So just because you have these things here on this earth, money, cars, clothes, women, whatever. Homes, just because you have these material things, it doesn't mean that you're happy. It doesn't mean that you're right with God. And that's the beauty of Christianity is, look, Christi Christianity is a religion. It is. But guess what? And people get like weird about that. Like, oh, I'm not religious. I, I'm in a relationship. Christianity is a religion. But guess what? It's so much more. It's also a relationship with God. It's a relationship with God. And he wants to meet you where you are at, no matter what stage of life you're at, because we are all at different stages. We are all at different levels of success, different levels of, of family, different levels of, of friends, different levels of, of everything. We're all at different levels. And God wants to meet you exactly in that place where you're at. Because he has healing for you. He has truth for you. And he has love for you. So, yo, I think I thought that was beautiful. Um, I wish people would stop walking by my house and triggering the cameras. But I thought that was beautiful, man. Um, 
I thought that was beautiful. I'll be I, I'm super interested to kind of see where her story goes. And I'm interested to hear more about her faith um, and kind of see where God takes her on that journey um, with him. And I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to see her speak more about God. Um, but I, I, I would be very curious to know deeper about her beliefs because um, I'm just interested in that kind of stuff, you know. But get on my comments, like this video. I'm out, y'all.